We're joined by Esa Gabriel, your director of the Youth Olympic Games. So you must be pretty busy at the moment uh, because of the games coming up, but uh, you've managed to take off some time to come to INSEAD to talk to the NBAs about uh, international sport. You've been involved with the Olympics in Sydney, the World Cup in France. The these are pretty complex events to stage. Yeah, indeed. Uh, with this, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the Americans use uh, expressions which are on the positive or on the negative, but frame it perfectly. In the case of the Olympic Games, it is said that it's the biggest uh, event in the world and it's only surpassed by war. So it's the biggest event in peacetime. And only the logistics of war can surpass the organization of what we call in our jargon mega sporting event like the Olympic Games. With the Youth Olympics that are about to take place in Singapore, there'll be three and a half thousand participants. So it's a pretty complex event. Uh, it must be quite difficult logistically. It's yeah, events. it's roughly one third of the uh, the size of the Olympics. Uh, it has a different flavor because it has a cultural and educational side to it, but it's an elite sporting event. And what is uh, nice in the case of what I'm doing is that this is a creation from scratch. Um, this, is, this will be the first ever Youth Olympic Games in the history of our movement. The IOC seems determined to try and bring young people into sports. Is that one of the main reasons why they're staging the Youth Olympics? Yeah, uh, I guess the idea of the Youth Olympics is to reach out and engage more uh, with the, uh, the youth uh, of the world. But mind you, it's not a defensive uh, move, i.e. it's not that the Olympic Games are losing steam and interest with the youth. On the contrary, it's interesting that, like for example, recently research has showed that the X Games which were created by a network for the youth uh, are, are, um, are, um, the, are um, eroding it themselves. Whereas the, the Olympic Games, although they can look like old school, etc., they keep with their symbols, they keep being up there even for the youth. But the Youth Olympics is one of the tools that the International Olympic Committee has put in place to reach out and engage with the youth and also to look at fighting obesity, uh, fighting also uh, the inequalities in sports, and reaching out to the uh, youth of the world at the right age and telling them about the Olympic values and uh, telling them to embrace them in their, uh, in their everyday life. The Youth Olympics are going to be held in August in Singapore. Correct. Are they keeping you awake at night? The, the sheer fact that uh, these are very big games to uh, stage. No, it, I guess with the, if, you, if you work a lot and if the paradox is you plan to be uh, to allow yourself to be in a spot where you have enough under your belt and enough knowledge and you're on your feet so that you can anticipate and take what the moment is going to deliver, the unexpected. That's the best thing about uh, mega planning, is that you have to allow and factor in that you will not plan for everything. And if you do that, then you can, you can be well focused and not be stressed but be on your feet and ready to go for it. That's, that's, that's the, the attitude I try to, to be into. You came from a civil engineering background. How did you get involved with sports management? Presumably it was a passion of yours. Yes, I, I, I used to play basketball. Um, by the way, I still I own, uh, I'm the co-owner of the basketball team in Paris, the professional team, so the passion is still there. And I, I, I did civil engineering because basically the Lebanese bourgeois uh, way of doing it is that you'll be an engineer, my son. Um, and I was a civil engineer and I went to INSEAD with an idea which is that to shift and get into the sports business where my passion was and where I started uh, to work in. I was in a, a master of ceremony, I worked with DJs and I started discovering backstage of what organizing a sporting event is about. So hence the move. So in some ways it's a rather um, odd path for somebody coming from INSEAD um, and then going into sports management like this. Yeah, I, I remember that um, I was a little bit of a backbencher when I was at INSEAD. Um, I was very, uh, was very aware that um, besides uh, the MBA providing me with the tools to better manage, so to say, um, this was a moment in my time where I was, I was really looking deep into myself about now uh, putting forward what is my path rather than the external engines that often drive us up to the, the, the 30s. 
And in, in, in my case, it was really trying to get uh, to bridge and get my passion for sports and uh, my professional life, I, I hate the word career, uh, come together. And when you look backwards, yes, you can see for some uh, something which is quite an achievement. I was the youngest director of the World Cup in track and field. Uh, I have I, uh, done the, the Olympic Games, worked, uh, as you said, on the World Championship uh, in, in numerous ways. But that's from outside. People say, oh, look, it's like a shooting star. But in reality, when you look backwards, you see a trend. But when you're looking forward, in my opinion, it is wrong to say that you plan things. You go through them with what's in you and things unfold. And that's where for me it's about being aware, being in the moment um, and, and moving ahead with that. And so opportunities come along and it's a question of grabbing the opportunity. Yes, they, they, I think if you work on yourself, which is the one thing which you do control, all the rest you don't. You control one thing, which is yourself in the moment. The rest you don't really control. If you, if you do that shift and focus on that, it's very liberating. In the workplace, it's pretty technical. It, it gets you with more energy and ability to listen more, uh, more empathy, and probably being more acute. Uh, but if you do that, then you're optimizing yourself at a given time, learning a language, uh, um, being passionate about something. And the window of opportunity then becomes larger, or is, is the lens of your full potential. That's, that's the idea. Now, you mentioned earlier that uh, you had a passion for basketball. You did, at one stage, um, have the opportunity to join the NBA, yeah. but then had to turn it down. Yes, yes, correct. When I was uh, uh, that backbencher at, uh, at, with my MBA year, um, I, was, uh, I, used to, I had a motto when everybody was used to laugh a bit, with, or at least smile. It was from MBA to NBA. You know, career management services said you have to visualize and put it in, in, a, in a, and frame it. And what happened, and it's an interesting story, is that I went to the NBA, had an interview for uh, to do a bit of an internship and try to enter. And obviously, they kicked me out. No experience uh, coming from civil engineering, etc. So I I went ahead and got a great job, which is at France 98, the World Cup organizing committee in France at that time, and became the youngest director, the director of the International Media Center. The next day that I got the job and signed the contract, I got a phone call from the NBA. And what did I do? I refused my dream job. So uh, there's so much you can plan. And it's, it's, and it's really about not planning. That's the first thing you learn when, you, when you're a mega planner, is that you cannot plan everything. Same thing in your life. So if the NBA comes knocking on your door, you'd grab it? Oh, this time. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what this will be about. But, uh, I might refuse it a second time. So Gabriel, Director of the Youth Olympics um, of the International Olympic Committee, thanks for joining us on INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you very much.